what's up everybody welcome back to another video from exotic astrology and many of you had requested me to put up the chart of uh, a monk you wanted to see uh, how the combinations are so here it is this is a, a chart of one of my senior god brothers with whom i have been associating myself from uh, the year 2010 onwards and this person is currently uh, a monk in a temple in maharashtra and he is a very beautiful person and some of the best days and best moments and most cherished memories of my life are spent with this person so i am extremely delighted to present his chart here so this person is born on 3rd of august 1990 bihar sharif that's the place in bihar india so uh, we will be seeing some of the combinations in the chart which uh, help him uh, to go towards uh, renunci renunciation towards a life uh, without family and marriage now first things first the most important criteria for a monk is not that he or she stays away from women or the opposite sex but the person has to be very 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 spiritual in nature oh yes and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website the link is there in the description below yes and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with your family friends and colleagues okay so the first thing which i said was that uh, the most important trait is that the person has to be very spiritual because when you are staying as a monk in the temple uh, you have to be uh, connected with spirituality lifelong yes so <clears throat> that means uh, the ninth house has to be very 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 strong the fifth house also has to be very strong the lagna lord also has to be very strong these three houses should be extremely strong and the ninth and tenth should have some kind of a connection because when you are a monk then uh, majority of the karma which you do is pertaining to spirituality and 10th house is the house of karma and 9th house is the house of spirituality here yes so we will see what are the different combinations in this chart yes so the first thing that we uh, see here is that he has an exalted jupiter here and sun is also there with jupiter and ketu is also there so the ninth house is very 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 strong and ketu also likes to sit in water signs because that helps in meditation etc now jupiter is not only the natural significator of spirituality it is also the ruler of the fifth house which makes this combination even much 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 more powerful you see so when the fifth lord is in ninth then that shows the person can uh, do a lot of meditation and connect uh, to spirituality through mantras and through because the fifth house shows what you love to do and when fifth lord goes to the ninth house that shows that um, you love to do spiritual things yes so uh, that uh, can also happen if the ninth lord is in the fifth yes so but here the fifth lord is exalted and it is also in the ninth house and it is also aspecting the first house so it is also aspecting back the fifth house because jupiter aspects the fifth and the ninth house from wherever it sits so this fifth house is very strong here and the ninth house is also extremely strong and here if you see uh, sun and ketu are also conjunct in the ninth house and sometimes some astrologers refer to this as shiva yoga because sun and ketu's conjunction generally is not very good for the materialistic society for materialistic world because uh, sometimes it can show that your one foot is in the material world and the other foot is in the spiritual world but when this happens in the ninth house this shows that you are totally into spirituality yes now this does not mean that anybody who has sun ketu in the ninth house will become a monk or something like that but even if you are not a monk you are a householder this is very 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 good for spirituality you can do a lot of spiritual activities spread spiritual knowledge and do a lot of uh, preaching which uh, other people may not be able to do yes so because sun is the natural significator of the soul and ketu is also the natural significator of 
spirituality just like jupiter yes so uh, sun also signifies light yes so jupiter sun ketu all three signify spirituality in their uh, highest aspects so when they are sitting in the ninth house this is extremely powerful and sun and ketu both are in the nakshatra pushya which is considered to be the best of the best of the best nakshatras of the zodiac which means that uh, when there are prominent planets in pushya nakshatra the person may not be uh, interested in doing materialistic activities too much and he may do activities uh, which benefit the society benefit the world and bring enlightenment to others that is why a pushya is considered to be the best but, but uh, not because that uh, people born in pushya are foodies and they are born in million born as millionaires or billionaires as some of the youtubers always keep saying that oh pushya is very good for wealth but they do not understand what real wealth is yes so now here if you see as i said connection between 9 10 is very important here surya is the 10th lord because the sign number 5 is there in the 10th house it's leo here so uh, now you see that the 10th lord is in the 9th house which is one of the very 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 strong rajyogas yes so this becomes very important actually because now what's happening is that uh, the lord of karma is gone to the lord of dharma uh, to the house of dharma I mean, yes and it is also conjunct the fifth lord and this is also very good for your reputation name fame status because uh, this person has uh, been into a lot of managerial posts and this person has been a very successful leader that is very good if the 10th and the 5th lords are combined yes because 5th house shows your position also apart from the 10th house because it's the original sign of Leo number 5 so here this beautiful uh, conjunction is happening and now here if you see carefully it is a Scorpio ascendant and uh, the Lagna Lord is Mars and some tech, some places also say that Ketu is also the Lord of uh, the other co-Lord of Scorpio. So if you see here, the Lagna Lord uh, Mars is here. I mean that planet which has a body, it is in the 6th house. 6th house is the house of celibacy. Yes, we all know that because it is 12th from the uh, house of marriage the 7th house yes this is the 7th house and this is the 12th from the 7th house so now when the lagna lord goes into the 6th it can show that the person likes to stay away from the opposite sex yes and because it is very strong in its own sign and this person is a very go-getter kind of a person because anytime you say anything to this person this person will go and achieve it yes and the lagna lord is also in a fire sign that can also show that the person likes to stay alone and do things uh, in life which uh, will give him a lot of fulfillment rather than just enjoying with the opposite sex so that can also be seen sometimes of course depending on the other conditions of, of the chart uh, and now if you see carefully here the other lord of scorpio ketu is in the ninth house so the Lagna, you can take Ketu as the other co-lord. So Ketu is with Sun and Sun is the 10th lord. So Lagna lord and 10th lord are conjunct in the 9th house. Yes. So 9th house of spirituality and the other Lagna lord is in the 6th house. So 6th house is the house of celibacy. So celibacy and spirituality, these two are being combined beautifully here. And apart from that, we see that uh, this person is staying in a temple and temple is basically what a large organization so if you see here the 11th lord of large organizations network circles etc is also coming in the 10th house yes and mercury is also the 8th lord of hidden things occult sign and mysticism etc so when the 8th lord is in the 10th as i was having an interview with uh, james brahasa the uh, day before yesterday and he was telling this in his video <laughs> that if the 8th lord is in the 10th or the 10th lord is in the 8th or 12th lord is in the 10th or 10th lord is in the 12th then that can show that there are problems in career unless that career is related to spirituality and mysticism astrology or some kind of a divine science yes so here the 8th lord mercury is also in the 10th house that shows that his primary karma will be dealing with matters of the 10th house and this person keeps dealing with a lot of people on an everyday basis 
as it happens in temples and that is also seen by mercury here because mercury represents people communication and 11th house is the house of uh, large organizations network circles so the 11th lord is in 10th which is very good for career yes now there are so many other things in this chart because uh, for example the 9th lord is in the second house and it is with saturn so this shows that the person likes to do a lot of meditation and stay in seclusion because and the saturn moon conjunction which is known as vish yoga in astrology is also there now vish yoga does not mean that uh, there is some poison in the chart as the word vish signifies it simply means that the person might have to stay alone sometimes and this person <clears throat> is uh, the person also likes to stay alone uh, i have always heard this person saying that oh i don't want to marry i want to stay alone yes so that is very true with the, these kind of placements so saturn moon conjunct can show these kind of things and we also know that second house is the house of family yes family or your people who are near to you so when there are there are there are planets like saturn here which is a natural malefic of course then it can show that uh, the the family life of the person can be uh, can be a bit unconventional in the sense that uh, he might stay alone so that is sometimes seen in the second saturn in the second house or in case of saturn in the fourth house or in case of saturn in the seventh house also so i have seen that in my personal experience so that that is also uh, getting true here and saturn also aspects the fourth house yes so fourth house is the house of your home and establishment so when saturn aspects this house then there can be some issues pertaining to that or you might voluntarily abstain from setting up a home or family yes so that is holding true here very much now the, uh, the other important thing here to be noticed is the seventh house shows your marriage yes so when seventh lord is sitting in the dustanas that can show some difficulties pertaining to getting married or something like that so here uh seventh lord is venus because the sign two is there in the seventh house which is taurus so taurus is lorded by venus so venus is in the eighth house yes so when seventh lord is in the eighth or when eighth lord is in the seventh this can show some challenges within uh, marriage so now this seventh lord is in the eighth house and it is also aspected by another natural malefic which is saturn so this shows uh that there is denial of marriage here in this case yes now suppose this would be the chart of any other person yes and he was uh, because there are many charts i've seen with uh scorpio ascendant saturn in the second house venus in the eighth house but not everybody is a monk yes so that is happening because this person is not interested in women and the ninth house is very strong now so, now suppose the mars the lagna lord would have been in the seventh house yes and these planets would have been in some other houses like 11th house 10th house or first house fourth house seventh house and then this saturn venus uh, thing would be there seventh lord in eighth then what would happen this person would get married maybe uh, depending on the other things of course uh, but there would be some level of suffering in the marriage because the seventh lord is in the eighth and it is also aspected by another natural malefic and the seventh house is also aspected by rahu here yes and uh, because of that uh, and if these planets would not be placed here they would be placed in some other houses yes then maybe the person would get married and then there would be some suffering uh, some pain but maybe the person would stay married or get married again to somebody else but maybe they would stay in the in the in in the world like just another person yes by getting married but because in this chart the ninth house is so strong and the lagna lord is in the sixth house and then we can say that uh, this person uh, is voluntarily abstaining from the opposite sex and because of that uh, this uh, saturn venus and seventh lord in the eighth and rahu aspecting the seventh house saturn aspecting the fourth house these have led to him staying away from the opposite sex and as i said if this ninth house would not be very strong and if mars would not be in the sixth house uh, then maybe the person would have got married okay so now uh, that's like uh, a very harmonious chart that you don't want to get married and at the same time you're very spiritual but 
not everybody has this kind of chart so most of the times you will see seventh lot is very badly placed or smashed uh, and at the same time you will see that uh, there are uh, there are planets not much planets in the ninth house so in that case the people can uh, get married but if they are not having happy marriages they cannot I have seen that they cannot become spiritual and later see towards God or enlightenment but that is not happening in this case this person is having such a beautiful chart that uh, without marriage this person can stay and uh, lead a very God conscious life yes so and yes now there are so many other things which uh, I will not share in this chart because of the interest of time and that was the highlight of uh, this chart and there are so many things which we need to see so the main the most important thing for becoming a monk is that he should be extremely spiritual uh, the first which is seen from the ninth house sun ketu and jupiter and two of them being uh, i mean jupiter being a, being in exaltation and sun and ketu both being in the nakshatra pushya and the tenth lord conjunct the lagna lord ketu sun ketu again in the tenth house uh, uh, sorry in the ninth house and the fifth lord being in exaltation in the ninth house aspecting the lagna and the fifth house back and uh, saturn and moon very good for spirituality because it is the sign of sagittarius ultimately and uh, this person is currently undergoing his sade sati period because uh, currently saturn is transiting over his natal moon yes so in the second phase of sade sati this person is undergoing and <coughs> Apart from that, Saturn aspects the 4th house and Rahu aspects the 7th house and Saturn also aspects the 7th lord and the natural significator of marriage, Venus, which is in the 8th house, ruling the 7th house and the Lagna lord in the 6th house in the sign of Aries, which shows that the person likes to stay as a celibate in the temple. Yes, and 11th lord in the 10th also shows this sometimes, yes, depending on other combinations, of course. Alright, so now many of you will write in the comments, oh my god, I have Venus in the 8th house, my Venus is ru ruling the 7th house. As I said, just because you have Venus in the 8th house or 7th lord in the 8th doesn't mean you don't get married, okay? That only happens if the Lagna lord and the ninth house are supporting this, which in this case is supporting, yes. And there are so many other things which uh, I will not share in this video, okay? all right so that is it from my side two things i wanted to share share in this video abstinence from the opposite sex and a very strong lagna lord and ninth house okay so that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and that is all if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is asking you oh should i become a monk or not all right Bye-bye. See you.